Guys, I did it again. I made another oopsie, but not entirely. So I accidentally deleted a good chunk of the game hunting footage that was supposed to air this week. I don't know why I've done that recently. I've been very good at not doing it, but not all of it. And in fact, the stuff that was not deleted is going to be the main focal point of this week's episode as we attempt to find games that I can flip for a profit. And pick up a few games for the collection as well. It's the Bargain Game Hunter. So I actually had the footage for this episode ready to go on my laptop, ready to edit, and apparently without realizing that, oh, I haven't actually edited that episode, I dumped it all in the trash. Not all of it, though, because I decided to try something a little different, something new for this episode. And that new thing, of course, is the Game Hunt Cam, or my GoPro, as I like to call it. So I usually, when I film things for this series, I usually just pull out my phone and kind of, like do a quick scan but this time I figure you know what I'm gonna show you the whole process I don't know if I'm gonna do this every time because it is a little cringy to walk around with a GoPro attached to my chest but I figure for this one and maybe for a couple other ones in the future I'll try this out see how it is so we're gonna head to our first pawn shop and see if we can find anything so the rules again I'm only going to be looking for games that I can flip for profit at GameStop. And we're also only going to be picking up games that are going to be decently profitable. So I'm looking for mostly double ups. I might be going willing to go a little bit under, but it needs to be close to a double up. We're not really looking to pick up for the collection. It's mostly for flipping. So let's head to our first pawn shop. See what we can find. So the GoPro footage you see is going to be intercut between me explaining how things go or how this particular game hunting trip went. Now before I recorded any of this, I also did some game hunting to add to the collection. Now the main focus of the challenge is to find stuff that I can flip for a profit either at GameStop or on eBay, but I did a little game hunting beforehand, and I actually kept one of the games I picked up while doing this video. We'll show those at the end. So let's take a look at our first pawn shop, which is Value Pawn. Now I went to both Value Pawns this time. Now this was, this Value Pawn has done me well over the years. They do individually price their games, and at the time of the recording, they had their games in this little section along the wall. In addition, they had a case that had some controllers and like switch systems and stuff in it. So rather than talking about it, let's see how I did. There's their controller set up. They have some decent controllers. Nothing like super valuable, but a lot of switches, stuff like that. Here's what we're looking for. That's a maybe. I'll have to look it up. That one maybe. That one maybe. We'll toss this one in there too. So I'm gonna look up all these on my own and see if any of them are worth picking up for the flip. So I didn't pick up any of those four games just because they weren't worth a ton. And Value Pond tends to quote prices. Usually it's between $5 and $8. It depends on the game. But these just weren't big enough of a boost in order for me to actually make a profit. So I put them all back. I didn't have a ton of money at the time that I was recording this. So I wanted to find stuff that I could make some actual money on 
rather than trading credit or adding things to the collection. So a couple dollars here, a couple dollars there just wasn't going to cut it. I had to find something that was good. So the next pawn shop was Queen of Pawns. And this is a pawn shop that I don't go to very often. Every now and again, I will score and score fairly well. Like that one week that I left with a bunch of PS3 games. All their games are flat priced, which is sometimes good, but sometimes very much not. Their flat pricing here is on the higher side. Usually it's like $4 or so for an older gen game and then 8 for a newer gen like PS4 and Xbox One, which is the majority of what they have. So because of that, the only way to actually make a profit on anything here is you got to find an absolute home run. That doesn't happen very often. Doing all right, how about you? <laughs> so next I went to Cash America, and typically Cash America is the pawn shop I most of the time do the best at, mostly because I've built up a pretty good relationship with everybody there. I come in all the time, they know I come in all the time, they usually make me good offers on things if I find anything good, but... There are times where there's just nothing there. And especially because I narrowed down what I was looking for to just things I could make a profit on for flipping, it wasn't always a guarantee that I was gonna find something at Cash America. What's up, how you doing, man? This is GTA 4. Easy, man. So then I went to my second value pawn, and this one does things a little bit different from the other one. They actually have prices on their games now. They used to quote like the other one did, but now they actually individually price their games. Most of the time, those prices are a little bit on the higher side, so unless it's something that they underpriced or something really, really good, I typically don't do super well. They have been getting a lot of controllers and a lot of systems lately, so those are always interesting to look at. But again, unless you can find something that's really underpriced, it's unlikely you're going to make a huge profit. So many consoles. Bravely default for thirty five dollars, geez. It's 
all the same stuff. Battlefield. Looks like oh, the Kirby game's still there. Yep. The last pawn shop I went to was La Familia, and this pawn shop I typically do okay at. They individually price their games, and they're usually fairly reasonable. The big thing that I enjoy about this particular pawn shop is oftentimes they're willing to slash at least a dollar or two off each game. So if you bring up a stack, usually you'll do okay. Now, at the time, I hadn't been to this pawn shop in quite a while, so I wasn't sure what I was going to expect when I came in there. Needless to say, I was quite surprised and impressed with what I found. some potential here, folks. There's some potential. Okay. How's it going? Very good, doing all right. Okay, take a look at some stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, no. Possibly some stuff. Um, I don't know if you knew this case is empty. Oh, you knew that already? No. Oh, well. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Uh, possibly interested in these, if, if you could possibly work something for me. What are these random PS3 games, just chilling? Yeah, and I think he's pricing it. I'm not sure if he's pricing it or he's too it. Okay. Well, I'll look just to see. Okay, then this one I can do twelve dollars and seventy-four cents for that. Okay. I'll give you the total in a minute. But in this one, I can do eight dollars and forty-nine cents. Okay. 
I can do ten dollars and twenty cents in this one. Okay. All together is thirty three seventy nine. Okay. Um, I'll do those two. I'll pass on that one. Yeah. Hmm? I'd be eight dollars and forty nine cents. I mean, I'd do it for like seven or six, but. For seven dollars? Yeah. I'll do it for seven for sure. For seven? Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah, I'll do it then. Also, I wanted to ask, are these available or? Yeah, that's for selling right now. Um, how much are you asking for that one? Four ninety-nine. And you four? I'll do it for four. And I have to put it in the system first. Okay. And I have time today to put it in the system. Oh, gotcha. It will be done by tomorrow. Oh, okay, so it's not in, not in yet. No, not, no, not, not yet. Not in the yeah. system yet. Okay. Cool. I'll take those then. You want a baggie? Uh, yeah, I'll take it back. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So as you saw in the footage, I did come away with three games. I hope to come away with four because I noticed, as you saw, a little stack of PS3 games that hadn't been put out yet. And one of the games was a copy of Minecraft. Now, anytime you can find Minecraft, if you can get it for cheap enough, it's absolutely worth picking up. Because Minecraft not only sells on every platform, but also has pretty good trade-in value at GameStop, worst comes to worst. Unfortunately, they were not in the system yet, so I couldn't buy it. Now, I did go back the next day, and it was gone. It apparently sold within a couple hours of being put out. All the rest of the PS3 games were out, but that one was not, so I missed out on it, unfortunately. But, them's the breaks. However, I still did very, very well at this stuff. So as you saw, I picked up three games. Two of which I got to flip, and one of which I got for the collection. And I think I did pretty well on all fronts. So the game I picked up for the collection, and the main reason why I picked this up is this is a fairly new game. And to find it at a pawn shop, but also for a pretty cheap price is kind of shocking. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick it up. I've never played the original version of this. This is a good opportunity for me to do so. All right, it's a good game. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated on the Xbox One. This came out, I believe, at the end of 2020. So this is not an old game at all. Maybe a year old. And the fact that it was already at a pawn shop for a pretty low price is impressive. I paid $12 for this out of pocket, and it's worth 18. So pretty solid pickup to add to the collection. But we ain't done. I picked up two other games, and these were the two that I picked up for my trading collection. As you saw, they were the Crash Insane Trilogy and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on the PS4. Now, Crash, I didn't think had that much value, but they weren't asking for that much, so I figured I'd probably pull the trigger, trigger and I think I did okay. So that one, I paid $7 for out of pocket. Now, like I said, the main goal of the challenge is to make a profit, so I didn't trade it in. I actually sold it on eBay. It sold fairly quickly for $16. So I made $9. Now, of course, eBay takes fees and I had to pay for shipping, but I also charge for shipping. So usually the shipping cost kind of balances us out a little bit. So 16 out of a $7 pickup, not bad at all. But the big one was Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Now that one I knew had some value. I actually have a copy myself on the Xbox One. The main reason why it has some value, besides the fact that Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is an awesome game, especially the Ultimate version, the PS4 and Xbox One versions were only available in physical form at GameStop. They sold it right around the time that Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite came out for 30 bucks a piece. And I guess they didn't make that many of them because their value has pretty much skyrocketed. Now, this one was one where as soon as I saw it in the case, especially for the price they were asking for, I knew I had to pick it up. I didn't realize until I looked it up on eBay how much that game is actually worth. I paid $10 for that game at the pawn shop. 
Thing was listed for 12, I got it for 10. I made $65 on eBay. It sold for 65. $55 profit. Now again, doesn't include fees or shipping. But still, $55 out of a $10 investment, that's pretty insane. So when you take everything out, I made $58.61 out of my $17 investment. I'm very happy with it. I think I did very well. That just proves if you can get a little luck, you can definitely make money by going to pawn shops or thrift shops, any of your local establishments, finding games or flipping them online. It definitely works out. So let's get to the rest of the pickups. Now, again, this was the footage that I lost. Mamma so I don't yeah. have any footage of me actually getting any of these things. But of course I have the games that I still have and I have the list of values and everything already set up. So let's start by talking about the games that I no longer have that I traded in GameStop for credit. So first up at Value Pawn, I picked up Grand Theft Auto 5 on the Xbox 360. Now pro tip, Grand Theft Auto 5 is a game that's not worth a lot. But if you can find the last gen version, so the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions, they're actually worth more in GameStop credit than the PS4 and Xbox One versions. Just because I think at this point, there's so many copies of the PS4 and Xbox One GTA V, every GameStop is just swimming in those. But the 360 and PS3 versions are a little more uncommon. So because of that, they'll pay up for those. So the 360 version, the other nice thing is the fact that because it's a 360 game, pawn shops tend to undervalue Xbox 360 and PS3 stuff. So that's oftentimes where you can do the best. If you can find older gen games that you know are worth some money, you can pick them up for dirt cheap and flip them for a nice profit. GTA 5 on the 360, I paid two bucks for value pawn. It was worth eight in trade in a GameStop. So pretty solid bump up there. Next up, I picked up Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 8 on the PS4. They only want a 15 for it, which is not bad. I wish it was cheaper, obviously, but considering it's a 2021 release and a still a fairly expensive game, I thought 15 was worth the gamble, and turns out I was correct. I was able to flip it for GameStop to GameStop for $24.20. So almost a $10 credit profit by flipping that game. So pretty solid start I'd say. All right next up one other game that I picked up not for the challenge but when I went back to La Familia and looked at those PS3 games they did have one PS3 game that I knew had a little bit of value and that was Skate 3. Now obviously I would have preferred that Minecraft game but Skate 3 is definitely worth picking up. I paid five dollars for it and it was worth ten dollars and fifty cents in credit so I doubled my money very easily. So Three solid trade-ins that I got some pretty solid credit at GameStop for. Another excellent flip. But now let's get to the stuff that I actually kept. So we're gonna start back at Value Pawn, and this one might surprise you, but I have a very valid reason for it. So I found this game a number of times, and GameStop pays a lot of money for it in trading credit, especially this version of it. But this is a nice copy, and I need this game for a video I'm gonna be making, hopefully before the end of the year. I, I'm actually just missing one title and I can do it. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on the Xbox 360. Now again, this game trades in a GameStop for like $13. It has a lot of value. They sell it for like 40. And this is a good copy. When you look at it, it has the inserts. The disc is in good shape. It runs great. I've tested it on my console. So I figured, well, yeah, I could trade it into GameStop and make a good profit. But if I'm going to keep a copy, which I did want to keep a copy, this is a really good copy to keep. Best of all, I paid $2 for it and it's worth 12 So pretty happy with the results. All right, next up, we went to GameStop. Now, what did I do with my credit, you might ask? Well, I picked up a few games and I picked up some Xbox Live credit. The reason why I picked up Xbox Live credit is because there is a digital-only game that came out the week that I filmed this that I really wanted, but unfortunately it is digital-only. So the only way to get it with trading credit is to buy currency from GameStop, which you can do, and they will, they will issue just a, a code on your receipt. So again, if you have a ton of GameStop credit and you have some digital games you want to purchase on your console, or if you have like an Xbox Series S, and want to add to your collection, 
That way, you can still trade stuff into GameStop and just buy currency. So that works out. But anyway, I spent $40 in credit on the enough currency to buy Diablo 2 Resurrected on the Xbox Series X. I've played a decent amount of it. It's Diablo 2. They did a lot of nice quality of life improvements. I've enjoyed what I've played. I need to get back into it, but there's so many games out right now. It's kind of tough to spend a lot of time, especially on an old game like that, even though it's a good remake of an old game. But I, I got it. I enjoy it. Worthy of pickup. Now, the other two games I picked up, I mostly picked them up because I don't see them very often. They look pretty uncommon. I got them for really good prices and really good value. First off, we have No Straight Roads on the PS4. I've never seen this game before. It looked really interesting. It's like a music-based action-adventure game. Corey's played it, he really likes it. I was really curious about it, so I figured, you know what? Might as well. I paid $30 in credit for it. It's worth 19, so not a huge bump, but again, I paid credit and I got a lot of credit from stuff that I didn't pay much for. So it's okay to get a little bit of a loss. That loss is made up for with the Sexy Brutal, the full house edition on the PS4. Now this one, I've always wanted to play this game. I've heard it's very good. It's like a murder mystery, like puzzle game. I don't know, there's a lot going on here. But what's interesting is I didn't know there was a physical copy. Not only is there, but this is a special edition that includes like a full art game manual, a soundtrack, a bunch of really good stuff. And GameStop very much undervalued it. I paid nothing. I had a $10 reward and I paid that to get this game and it's worth $18. So they were only asking for 10 to begin with. I just used a reward, got it essentially for free and it's worth 18. Pretty happy with that for sure. And I'm excited to try this out when I get a chance. Last game I picked up is a game that again, up until now, didn't have a physical release. Now the box when I first pre-ordered this on Amazon, so it was a limited run game. It is not, but it's a game that looks interesting. And I think it's worth owning a physical copy. It's also one that was not available at GameStop. So the only place I saw where you could buy this was on Amazon. So I figured, you know what? It's probably worth the pickup and I'll play it when I can get to it. Sea of Solitude, the director's cut on the Switch. So I picked this up on Amazon, completely out of pocket, paid $30 for this for 32. So not too bad. And there you go. That is the flipping games for a profit challenge. Did a little game hunting at the end for good measure. I think I did pretty well. Made a nice little profit on a couple games. Got some decent profit on some trade-ins. Picked up some new stuff. Added a bunch of nice additions to my collection. Solid week game hunting. That's going to do it for this episode of The Bargain Game Hunter. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully I won't be deleting any more <laughs> episodes of this series. I've I've learned how to not do so. I actually have a little file on my phone where I save the completed episodes and I don't delete them until I've transferred them to my computer. So yeah, I hopefully will not be deleting any more episodes. Also, if you want to see me bring back the game hunting cam, aka my GoPro, let me know in the comments below. I think I am gonna bring it back for some future episodes. I haven't filmed one since this episode that uses it, so don't expect it to be back anytime like super soon. But if you want to see me do another episode using that camera, let me know in the comments below. I know a lot of other game hunting channels do it, so I'm down. I think it's kind of cool to show the process of, you know, negotiation as well as, you know, what I look for. So if you want to see more, just let me know. Anyway, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. If you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell. That way you know when new videos drop. And I will see you next week on the Bargain Game Hunter. Bye-bye.